Thank you for joining us for KW Malaysia Virtual Trading this morning. Um, today we have a very exciting topic uh, that is none other led by Wing, who is our Market Center 2 Ace um, platform co-owner or co-founder. So he will be working with us and helping us to understand um, how are we going to kind of work with our clients and what are the models that we will be able to work closely and get more clients. Um, but before we move on, uh, can you all hear me all right? I have some comments here about no sound. Um, I can hear, but the video is a bit lagging. I'm sorry? I can hear you well, but the video is lagging like a few seconds one time. Okay, so probably the internet, uh, uh, internet uh, speed, it's uh, kind of challenging for me here, I think. Um, so quick question to everyone. How many of you right now in talks on negotiating deals with your clients right now? If you are, please type one. Oh, there are a few of you are treating deals right now. Excellent, excellent. Okay, good, good to see that. Well done, well done. How many of you, what are one of your number one takeaways? That, what, what are your expectations? What do you expect to learn from today's session today? Put in the chat box. What are the things that you want to learn or you expect to learn from today's session? Put it on the chat box, please. Take your time to type it out and put it on the chat box. Um, I'm gonna wait for just a couple more minutes because we have quite a lot of sign up for this session, but um, they're probably taking some time to, to load, to log in. What are some of the things that you wanna take away from today's session? Um, please type it on the chat box right now. Simple one-liner. Anyone? What are the things that you wanna learn from today's session? Please type it in the chat box. This is the awkward moment when we when when the host is asking someone to, to type something and nobody is typing. There you go. How to get clients. Thank you, Jean. Practical model to use to win clients. Awesome. What else do you want to learn from today's session? Win the negotiation. Awesome. How to talk to stubborn owners to adjust their price. Okay, awesome. Better communication with clients to close deal. Awesome. What else? What are the things that you wanna learn from today's session. Thank you for sharing, for the rest of you who are sharing. For those who are still typing in, just put that in so that we all put ourselves in the right perspective, in the right mindset. We set ourselves up for success today by being focused um, with high intensity in today's session to kind of learn and capture some of the things that uh, potentially is being shared here and so that it will help you in your business. Learn from champions, awesome. Learning the mindset to win from clients, awesome, why well done. All right, since we have a lot of people already signed in already, yes, the line is very bad today, Hannah. I'm not sure why. Um, without further ado, I'm going to just pass the time to Wing to kind of give you that session right now and bring us uh, to the next level in the way we want to learn about how to work with our clients. Wing, the time is yours right now. All right, thank you very much, Jonathan. A very good morning to everyone. Let me just share my slide. Okay, I saw some of the some of the expectation from today's session. Now it's a two hour session, so I'll try my best to cover as much as I can. I'm not to be very frank with you, I'm not able to, to cover all, but uh, I'll do my best. All right. So you can see uh 14 April, uh, 14 April was my uh 14 April, some of us will be called into a meeting, all right. And in that meeting, I was basically given five words and a date. All right. The five words given to me was uh, scripts to win your client and the date is 13 May, 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. All right. So I changed one of the words from script to model, which is why the title of today's presentation is model to win your client. Okay. Now, before I begin, I just want to quickly ask one question. Now, what do you all want to hear in today's session? You all want to hear uh, a nice things or b the truth. Can you all put into the chat box what you all would like to hear today? 
Because you know, the world is getting crazy. Uh, because nowadays, I need to seek permission. If not, it's a, I, I, I cannot scolding. Okay, all right. So majority is B. So, so if you have attended my sessions before, you know, I, what I'm, like I always say I'm not a motivator. So whatever I speak is really uh, the, the truth in what I observe on the ground. All right. So luckily, there's no one answering A who want to hear nice things. Okay. Now, if you just in case if there's any A's, then then uh, just got to bear with us uh, because majority pick B. Okay. Now the problem is this: the truth is something that almost nobody want to hear, but everyone wants to know. All right. So a lot of times, the truth might not be something uh, nice to hear, but it is very important that you need to know it. Okay, so I believe a lot of people is like this image right now. All right, you all have got many questions. Your, your questions will be like, you know, what is going to happen after the CMCO or the PKPB uh, until June? Or what is going to happen until end of 2020? What is the new normal? What is going to happen to the economy? Is property price going to drop 70%? So I know I'm aware that everybody has got a lot, a lot of questions during this period of time all right and also if you see like i mentioned just now the world is getting crazy uh, you know we have minister you know saying drinking warm water can kill coronavirus you know world most powerful prime minister saying injection of disinfectants can kill coronavirus we have minister asking women to become the raymond and we also have ministers saying that there is 500 countries in this world now, I'm not sure how many more similar leaders out there. So if you are relying on leaders get you out of the current crisis, I can only wish you all the best. All right. So many people out there who is still confused and want to know what is the strategy that they can deploy to get out of this crisis. It is very simple. There are only three strategies. All right. There's only three strategies. So for everyone, so like I mentioned just now, we only got three strategies to get out of this crisis. Now, all this strategy involves how we spend our time moving forward and also the implication to our potential income. Now, strategy number one is hope. Now, you can choose to sit still and wait for the government to assist you and hope for things to be better. My worries is that your income will be like this red line, all right, where it drastically. That is strategy in one, you sit and hope. Strategy number two, you can choose to be in the survival mode. You can use your current savings, spend less, pull through this period of time and hope that everything goes back to normal. However, the best case is your income will be like this green line. That is the best case. All right. Now the worst case, your income could be like the red line. So that is if you choose strategy number two, which is to choose to be in the survive mode. And of course, strategy number three, which is the last strategy you can choose to go all out to thrive moving forward. You can use this opportunity to learn new skills, knowledge, and adapt to the new environment and new normal for your business quickly. You have the opportunity to grow your income like the blue line. So whatever strategy you want to take moving forward, it's all in your own, own hands. But for me and the team, we are very much committed to strategy number three, where we are going all out to thrive in this market. Now, what do we want our real estate business to be like? Now, business is very interesting as there is more than one way to be successful. There is no right or wrong. It is only which route suits every individual better. Okay, let me illustrate using some very simple example. Now, this is Uncle Wong. Uncle Wong is a very successful coffee shop owner. Now, he makes some of the best coffee in Ipoh. He has clients queuing up in front of his shop every morning and people drive all the way just for a cup of coffee. And he is still making the coffee himself every day. 
he had successfully raised two children who are very successful doctors and engineers. Next is Uncle Tan. Uncle Tan is also a very successful cafe owner, which serves coffee as well. Now, he decided to systemize his cafe so that he can have staff that can operate the business for him and yet able to consistently serve the coffee to his client. Now, he still worked very hard. He still manages his cafe every day. And he also successfully raised his children to become very successful individuals. So you can see both Uncle Wong and Uncle Tan are very successful entrepreneur in the coffee business. But both uses a very different route. Now, if you were to run a business right now, whose business model would you like to follow and why? Can let us know in the chat box, like who would you follow and why? Okay, a lot of people reply Uncle Tan, but any, any reasons why, why you prefer Uncle Tan's method? Like I say, there's no right or wrong. All right, you can use the Uncle Wong method or the Uncle Tan method. Both is also very successful in their coffee business. All right, I got TH Ng says Uncle Tan because of scalability, Uncle Tan because of system. Okay, I got Uncle Wong less overhead is true as well. Uncle Tan and leverage. Okay, all right. Now, this is a coffee business. Now, let's look at other illustrations. Now, there are other similar scenarios as well. All right, there are other similar scenarios as well. Now, let's look at this burger business. Patrick Ali, you know, sells burger on his uh, truck. And he sells some of the best burgers. And he serves some of the most premium burgers. And he made a lot of money from it. And we also got Patrick Kia, all right? who decided to systemize his, her, business, uh, her, her burger business so that she can serve a lot more clients. All right? Both of them is also very successful. Now, if you look at the shoe business, Uncle Mutu. Now, Uncle Mutu still makes shoes every day. And he makes shoes for the VVIPs. All right? So he charged premium for his shoes. Similarly, we have also Uncle Raj. Uncle Raj decided to systemize his business, all right? So you can see uh, he has systems and people in place for him to make the shoes. So he can make many more shoes. So he can, both of them also uh, generate a very uh, good revenue for their business. Now look at the hair saloon business. Look at on the right hand side, E. Sally also only does the hair for the VVIPs. You can see she got two PAs to assist her. All right? So she also charged premium for her service. And on the left-hand side, there's Auntie Mary who decided to set up an academy, you know, to systemize her art so that she can teach us, just so she can teach more people so that more people can serve the public. All right? So if you look at the very two premium for your service and the other is to systemize your business so you can scale your business by going. Like I mentioned just now there's no right or wrong. Now at the end of the day it is how you want your business to be like. So for myself I've decided to pursue the Auntie Mary route which is to follow proven model and systemize the real estate business so that we can scale the business to the next level. I got comments saying cannot see and cannot hear. I'm just wondering, is my slide and sound okay? The sound is good, um, but I think there's a video lag, so the slides transition quite like lag oh, okay. five ten seconds. Then I slow down. I slow down a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I think so. All right. Thanks. Okay. Okay. Then I'll move on. Now, just a quick recap of the virtual training that we have done so far, where we are right now. So you can see over the last few weeks during MCO, you have listened to many virtual training. For example, 
that is six personal perspective, there is lead generation, economic model, GPS, 135, 411, database management, 33 touch points. And there are more potentially coming. Now, why are these important? Because they are proven models to excel in real estate business. All right. And understanding. Now, there's a difference between knowing and understanding. Don't get confused between them. Okay. Now, knowing is an awareness of knowledge on a particular subject. Whereas understanding is a deeper conceptual connection with this knowledge and then be able to apply the particular subject. That is the definition. If you go and go Google, you'll get this definition. Right? Now, I know a lot might not understand. Now, let's put it into a very simple illustration to show what is the difference between knowing and understanding using your goal as a subject. All right, use your goal, which we all set every year as a subject. Your goal is simply having a goal that you want to achieve for the year. All right. Now, what is knowing? Knowing your goal is just simply having a goal that you want to achieve for the year. As understand your goal, it is having it written on a piece of paper, achieving the goal, and able to do it repeatedly. All right. If you understand your goal, it is, it is having it written it on a piece of paper, achieving it and able to do it repeatedly. Okay, so you see the difference between knowing and also understanding. So I see because a lot of people confuse between knowing and understanding, right? Like we run so many virtual trainings. Um, I, I hope everybody don't go out this virtual training uh, with, with the mindset of, oh, I already understand the model, all right? Uh, I believe a majority of the people just know the model, okay? So, which is why my question is this, you know, after you're attending all the virtual training, okay, do you know or understand the model, all right? So, do you actually know or understand the model, all right? And you all want to feedback and put in the chat box, so after you attending all the virtual trainings, uh, do you know or understand the model? Uh, now, I, Michelle and Celine, I think you need to check on your site. You need to adjust your volume and make sure that uh, the, the sound is okay. Okay. Okay, I've got two folks that, that reply understand. Okay, now, remember the 80-20 rule? Uh, based on my observation, and after speaking with a lot of people through the consultation, what I noticed is that 80% of the people know, but only 20% of the people understand. Okay, now, which is why 20% of the people who in the model, they would produce 80% of the result. Okay. Now, like I say, like I say, because you all, you all want me to tell the truth. Huh? So I'm telling you the truth. All right. I, I'm, I, I, it's actually a fact, you know, uh, majority of you all only know the model, but you all don't actually understand the model. Okay. Okay. Next is, now let's look at the definition of model. I believe everybody, you know, keep hearing the word, the word model, model. So what is actually a model? Now, a model is basically a system which is a theoretical description that can help you understand how the system works. All right. So it is a description to help you understand how the system works. That is a model. Then the next question is, then why do we need a model? Now, models are being built so that we better understand the process and also in time, it will expose opportunity for simplification and be used. A system 
is also where every step. Um, I think, and, yeah. I think there's a connection problem. Um, couldn't hear you the past one minute. Uh, sorry, Lynn, I cannot hear you. Okay, um, no, I think there was a connection problem. Uh, couldn't hear you from the past one minute. It's okay. Um, yeah, continue, continue. I think it's connection now. Also, I see a lot of people cannot hear. Actually, I'm, I, I purposely already connect through wired and I'm at 300 Mbps. <laughs> it's like me, their own answer. individual. Yeah, because it's totally fine for me. Okay. See, if I, if I look at the comment, there's a lot of no audio, volume low, no sound, can't hear. Oh my god, what happened today? Please, <laughs> yes. On the ISP side. The, the shake one, okay, I don't bang the table, then it won't shake. <laughs> okay. Alright. So now, I can, I will continue. Okay, I'll do slowly. Uh. I'll do slowly. So why do we need model? Alright. So like I say, we build model so that we can better understand the process. And it will expose opportunity for simplification and also reuse. And secondly, the system is also where every step of the process is defined and the person using it performs each step every time the process is executed. And with a model, it is to ensure that efficiency, consistency of result is always there, whereby it's able to produce high quality work every time. you keep hearing us mentioning the word model. Now, if you put that into a diagram, a model basically is like this. This is the simplest model, all right, where you have got an input, and if you take this input, you fit it in the process, you basically have step A, B, C, D, E, F, and after you complete that process, you will get an output, all right? Basically, this is, this is a model. Forget about the feedback for now. I want to keep it as simple. So through a process and you get an output. Basically, that is a model. Okay, now let me let me illustrate using a very simple uh, illustration what I mean by this uh, diagram. Okay, now assuming, now assuming you have got a watermelon. A watermelon juice. All right, you want to produce a watermelon juice. So your input is watermelon, your output is watermelon juice. Now, what is the process? The process is first, you need to slice the watermelon. Step number two, you need to remove the skin. Step number three, put it into a blender and blend. And finally, you will get an output. All right, so based on this illustration, this is what we call a model. Okay. So you can see that it's proper steps that would tell everyone what you need to do with that watermelon to get the watermelon juice. Okay. Now, what if there is no process? What if there's no process? Okay. Now, take the common sense out of from this equation for now. Huh? Okay. Because I just want to illustrate. Now, let's say there's no process. What could potentially happen? Okay. Someone might just take that whole watermelon and try to chuck it in into the blender. All right. Or in another scenario, someone could have just sliced the watermelon but never removed the skin and put the skin into the blender as well. All right. So you can see without a model, without a model, you end up, you could get a watermelon juice uh, with the watermelon skin in it. Or potentially, you're not able to get watermelon juice as well. All right. If you try to chuck the whole watermelon into the blender, you have spoiled the blender already. All right. So which is why when we have a model, when we have a process, Every time when we give everyone a watermelon, we will be able to consistently able to produce the watermelon juice. All right. So which is why we have got model. Okay. And then I move on. Now, success begin with proven model. Now, learning the proven model and system of high achievers and build your foundation for success by following this model first. Now, this is an image from the Millionaire Real Estate Agent book. Now, it illustrates 
the concept of why following the model help your business succeed. Now, if you start applying creativity before you have mastered the model, then you are potentially setting yourself up for future problems. Models provide structure and stability so that your business can grow. All right. Now, I know many have concerns. Now, these are all US models. Now, sometimes I'm being asked, is it applicable to us? Now, let me ask you uh, back the question. Now, do you buy their coffee? All right. I believe a lot of you all buy their coffee every other day. All right. And uh, do you buy computers? You know, com components inside the computer, a lot of it is US product. And finally, do you use Facebook, Instagram? Now, all these social media, majority of these social media platforms, they are all US models. All right. Now, even the Zoom platform that we are using right now to run these sessions, they are all US models. All right. So indirectly, every day, to be very frank with you, without us knowing, we are using the US model. Now, I was in Canada for my degree, and I worked in the US company for some years. Now, I remember back then, many people were trying to get into these multinational companies. All right? Those days, if you manage to get into these MNCs, it means that you are smarter, you get better pay, and also you, get, you enjoy better benefit than the rest. Okay? So, which is why a lot of times people also ask me, is are more people really smarter than us? Ah? All right? Is the are more people smarter than us? Now, to be very frank with you, the answer is no. As a matter of fact, they are actually lazier than us. Now, the only difference between the ang mo and us is that they systemize and model the process, all right? Which is why they are able to scale the business a lot faster and consistently. And I was also sometimes being asked, you know, then why don't we create our own real estate model, all right? Since we are also intelligent, we can also create the real estate model. Now, Tuan Tuan and Tuan Tuan, it is easy to create a real estate model. It is easy to create the real estate model. Now, what is difficult is to foolproof the model. Now, a proven model is time-tested with proven results. All right, for a model to be proven, it takes a lot of effort and time to foolproof and to show a, a good result. So, which is why it is, the problem is, it is easy to create the model but it is hard to foolproof to make it time-tested and proven model. Okay? So, now this is also from MREA, Models Breakthrough Ceilings. So you can attain a certain level of success utilizing your natural abilities, but expect to hit a ceiling at some point, all right? So wouldn't you like to achieve even greater success and break through that ceiling? Following a proven model would give you the breakthrough. For those who is still relatively new in the real estate business, you might have concern in the past, you can't succeed in real estate. I want to put those fears to rest. You can do this, you just need to follow the proven models. All right, so you can see from the diagram, you know, everybody got natural ability, but after a period of time, you will hit a ceiling. And then once you follow the foundation model, it will help you to break through. This is for uh, newbies and also beginners. Now, for those who are experienced in real estate, I know you have a dream to create a bigger impact. Now, you could be stagnant for the last few years. You could be still using the existing models that brought you to where you are today. However, in order to achieve the next breakthrough, you might need to adapt to a new proven and improved model. Whereby you can see from this diagram as well, when you are a newbie, you, you uh, adapt a foundational model, you will achieve the next ceiling. And when you apply improved model, it will help you break through and achieve a new ceiling. And if you keep doing that, you would scale greater heights uh, down the road. So no matter you are new or experienced, proven models will help you to break through your business. Because you are not the first, many has walked the path before. So leverage 
on the proven models. All right, so leverage on the proven models. Now let me revisit one of the six personal perspective, which is to move from E to P. All right, which is to move from E to P. I I believe if you attend a lot of the uh, virtual training, you you hear a lot of the word whereby moving forward you need to move from an entrepreneur to purposeful. Okay. Now, I also believe the six personal perspective session uh, doesn't matter where it's the English session, the Bahasa session, or the Chinese session. They have covered this in depth. All right? Now, I just want to quickly recap. Now, we could be doing our real estate business the entrepreneur way where we do what comes naturally. Now, moving forward, we need to move to doing it the purposeful way where we need to do what comes unnaturally. All right, so the goal for today's presentation is to help two types of people. For those who are beginner, you will get the models to break through your real estate business. For experienced people, you will get new ideas from the model to break through your real estate business. Okay, now if you look at, if you move from E to P, then now, how to move from E to P? Now, according to the KW model, there are five steps, all right? There are five steps to getting purposeful. Now, step number one, you need to focus on the goal. Step number two, you need to find strategic options. You need to know how this can be done. Are there different or better ways to do it? Step number three, for models to follow, which is why you need to attend training that teaches you how to get to where you want to go and identify mentors and people who have done it before. Okay, step number four in test the system to make sure they work. And finally, step number five, which is you need to bring in accountability. You need to keep track and measure what you do. So when, which is to doing things purposefully, our goal is not to fix what is not working. Now our goal is to replace what is not working with a proven and time-tested model. Okay, I repeat, when you move from an E to a P, your goal is not to fix what is not working, but to replace what is not working with a proven and a key. You see in step number three, which is you need to look for models to follow. All right. So I hope those you, you got a better understanding what does it mean by moving from an E to a P. And not just, you know, knowing, knowing where E is entrepreneur, P is actually purposeful, all right? So when you understand it, there's actually a, a, there's a lot more things into it. So you can see the five-step process, how you move from an E to a P, okay? Now, before I move on, is everybody still with me? Yeah? Can you all let me know in the chat box? Uh, whether you are still with me or you are already lost. Okay. Okay, good. Now, everybody still with me? Uh? Okay. So now I've already, you know, uh, give a description why, why we need models, all right, and, and why model is important, all right, so that we can, we can produce it uh, consistently. Okay, now I move on to the next slide. Now, this is a slide. Uh, in my previous session, I have highlighted that this is a complete real estate transaction. All right, this is a complete real estate transaction. That's why everybody would need to complete the cycle in order to earn the transactions. Now, there are many KW models in place to complete this transaction. And, uh, and 
And how Jonathan Lee helped me to start the session today, he asked everybody what you all would like to see from today's session. Now, to be very frank with you, I only got two hours. So I, I'm not able to cover all the models for you to complete this transaction. And, uh, and to be very frank with you, that there are very comprehensive models in the KW system that will help you to complete this system. Okay, so for today's session, for today's session, I would only focus on the listing stage. All right, the listing stage is the stage where you obtain property listing for sale from property owners. All right, listing is basically a stage where you physically go and meet the owner and obtain the property listing from the property owner. Okay, now like I say business, there's a lot of models, all right. So there are very different models. Now I know some of you all, all right, who just received some image from owner, owner and you treat it as listing as well. Okay, there is no right or wrong. At the end of the day, the question is how, the question is only about how effective is your approach. Okay. Okay, now. Now, very, very rare, I give rents the opportunity to complain. Now, those who work with me closely, they will know. Because to me, uh, I, I don't allow people to complain because I think complaining is only for the weak. Okay? But for now, I give everybody one minute. Okay? I give one minute to comment in the chat box. Now, what are the problems, issues, objections, and difficulties you face when dealing with the owner now. All right. Now I give you the opportunity to complain right now. Okay. So what are the problems, the issues, the objections, the difficulties that you are facing when dealing with the owner now? You can put in the chat box. I give everybody one minute. Okay, now I give everybody one minute. Huh? I will continue after this. I want to give everybody the opportunity to complain just for this moment. Okay. I get five more comments, then I will stop. Any more? Okay. All right. Now, everybody stop commenting. Uh. Everybody stop commenting. Now, let's have a look. What are the commonly faced problems uh, by you all now? Okay, Sazana says that they don't want to reduce the price, even the house cannot sell for two years. Harjinder says that they don't give exclusive. Cash fee says that they price too high. Murphy to get exclusive listing from them. Meitan also says that they are expecting high price. Same with Susan. Uh, Richard says that buyer not sure what they want. Okay, but this is buyer today. I'm focusing on listing presentation. Uh, Kamaru also unrealistic selling price, not willing to lower the price, don't want to come down. Okay, Kamaru Mokta says that low commission. Uh, Shirley also price, uh, no exclusive, not willing to face the truth that they have revised price, owner don't want to fix the house, lower commission. Commission, all right. So you can see now, which is why I, I asked everybody to comment in the chat box because after speaking with so many people, I can tell you every time the problem, issue, objection, or difficulties that rents tell us, they all boils down to this few only, right? They all boils down to this few only. Okay. So, so I will move on. Okay. So you just keep this in mind first. I will handle all this. So I will move on. Now, has anyone ever wondered how do a listing model looks like? All right. 
Has anyone ever wondered how a listing model looks like? Now, this is a listing model. All right, so this is a listing model. You can see there's a lot of box, a lot of box, a lot of arrows. So this is a listing model that I would go in detail today. Okay, now, now you can see the listing stage actually begin even at the end of your conversation with the property owner during the prospecting stage all right when you're on the phone you know prospecting for owner who want to sell the house and if the owner tell you that i got a property for sales then your pre-listing stage has already started all right so you can see at the pre the property owner during prospecting if they have got a property for sale you need to ask the property owner the following questions all right for example how did you hear about me where are you moving what motivating you to move there how soon do you have to be there now if we sell your home in the next 30 days will that pose a problem for you if yes what would be the problem what would have what would happen if your home did not sell how much do you want to list your home for how much do you owe on the property i'll be sending you a packet of information can you take a few minutes to review before we meet now do you have any other questions before we meet will all the decision makers be there when we meet and you end the conversation by scheduling an appointment to meet the owner to perform the the inspection all right so you can see all the above questions are being asked purposefully all right they are not asked for the sake of asking now if you can see these questions are being asked for a very specific or for a very uh there is a purpose behind it all right now this is the first stage when you do prospecting which is the pre-listing now the second step is on the actual day of appointment to meet the owner for the listing presentation all right so the next step is on the actual day when you meet the owner for inspection now the first thing you get the owner to do is to show you around the property all right you need to ask the owner to show you the things that they will be leaving behind what they will be removing any areas that has been enhanced right any uh, any uh, additional items which they have installed into the house so you need to clearly know all these things so that you can prepare a better presentation moving on all right and in the process you got to take pictures for marketing purpose as well okay so this is the time when you just need the owner to show you around the, the property and let the owner to to talk all you need to do is to ask the owner questions so that you are clear with what you will be selling later on okay now after after you are done with the property tour all right after you are done with the property tour now you need to find a spot to sit down with the property owner so that you can go through the pricing with the owner all right after seeing the house you need to find a, a comfortable spot both of you all need to sit down to discuss the pricing okay now what do you need to talk when it comes to pricing okay so you got to brief the owner there are five factors there are five factors that could affect the value of your property okay how many factors so there are five factors that could affect the value of your property now number one the recent sale which is the actual transaction price of the property now okay so if you are a specialist in that area you would know what are the houses that is being transacted right now 
all right? Or you can refer to the breaks to see what are the actual transaction price. So those are the recent sales. So you got to brief the owner about the actual transaction price. Number two, you also got to talk about the location. Number three, the condition, all right? The condition of the unit will also affect the pricing. Number four, competition. Now, what are the asking price for similar unit that is in the market right now? So you got to educate your property owners, the competition that they are facing right now in the market as well. All right, what other people are advertising at? And number five, the timing. What is the time frame that the property owner need to get the property sold? All right, so you got to tell the property owner, all right, now these are the five things that could, that could impact, you know, how you should price your property. And then you also go on and brief the property owner, what is the best pricing strategy? All right, so it is your job to educate the property owner, what is the pricing strategy? Okay, now you see the difference? It is our job to educate the property owner. It is not the property owner notifying us what is the price they want to sell. Okay? So we need to educate the property owner what is the best pricing strategy. Now, of course, you need to elaborate why is it important that we need to price the value correctly. Now, what is the consequences when we underprice or overprice the property in the market? Okay, so you can see that this, there, are, there are steps in place that would help you to educate the owner on what is the best pricing strategy so that at the end of the day, you and the property owner would be able to agree on a price which is, uh, which is good for you to get the property sold. Okay, now next we move on. Now, let's say after that you have educated the property owner the pricing, you have agreed a price that you want the owner to, to put the price tag. Okay, now next you need to review the selling process with the property owner. Okay, now you need to understand, you need to understand most of the property owner in their lifetime potentially could only buy and sell one or two times in their entire life all right so you cannot assume that property owners know the process very well okay so the next thing you need to do is you need to review the selling process with the property owner okay you need to review the selling process with the property owner so you will tell the property owner, when there is a potential buyer, we will get an offer from the buyer with a 3.5% earnest deposit with an agreement to purchase signed by the buyer. We will then present the offer to you for acceptance. Now, if you agree on the price, then you sign and then you accept the offer. If not, then we will negotiate on the terms and conditions. Now, upon acceptance of the agreement to purchase, okay, it will become a valid contract. Okay, now then the buyer will have 14 working days to apply for the property loan and for the first draft of the SPA to be sent over to the owner lawyer for review. And upon and once the SPA uh, is agreed upon by both party lawyer, and upon signing the SPA, the buyer will pay up the balance of 10% down payment. Depending whether it is a freehold or a leasehold property, the property owner will receive the balance 90% either at the end of three months or three months after obtaining the consent for leasehold property. All right. So you need to clearly brief the owner what is the selling process so they know what to expect and when, when they would able to get their money. Okay, 
So which is why you need to sit down and talk to them about the whole selling process. And you tell them that they might be, you know, they might be overwhelmed with the process. You can tell them, don't worry, we are there to facilitate the whole process. Okay, we will be there to facilitate the whole process. Now, once you are done, once the owner understands the selling process, the next thing you got to do is you got to tell the owner your service, your service and also your marketing. All right. So you need to tell the owner what service and what is your marketing strategy in helping the owner to get that one buyer for his or her property. All right. So you can see you need to advise how you can attract buyers by showing your home in the best possible light, okay? So you can, you also tell the owner that you would place for sale signage with property flyers, which is easily accessible to the potential buyers. You will also respond to all buyers' inquiries immediately. You would also optimize your home uh, uh, internet presence by posting their property in all the web portals. All right, you market their home into the multiple websites. All right, you can see there's a lot more. Uh, a lot of times we also tell them we will also market to our existing database. All right, once uh, we, we have exhausted our existing database, then we will network with our colleagues in the group. And we will also network with other agents outside the group. All right, so we will be doing all these things to help the owner find the one buyer for their property. All right, so you can see we need to tell the property owner what we will be doing to help them to source for that one buyer. All right. Now, after that, then once we talk about what are the service that we offer now, the, you need to go into the next part. Now, you need to negotiate on your commission. All right. So, okay. Now, before I go into the commission, now there's still other pointers here. So you can see, now these are the other service that you'll be offering. So you can see you'll be helping them to obtain the highest possible price for their property in the shortest period of time. You see, you will advise them on the pricing and staging. You will implement a very comprehensive marketing plan to expose their house. You would conduct the home showing process with their family needs in mind. And also you will be doing it yourself personally. And you will also negotiate on their behalf for the best offer. All right. So you can see there's more. So you, you still, you got to convince them that this is the service that I will offer to you. And I will do my very best to make sure that you have the best offer. All right. So this is what I will be doing in securing your buyer. Now, however, if I successfully uh, complete the transaction for you, my professional fees is 3% plus 6%. SST and all the other marketing costs will be borne by me. Okay. Then finally, you pull out the authorization to sell, whether it is general or exclusive, you get the owner to sign that authorization to sell for you. Okay, now if there's any other objection, you got to handle it. And once you are done handling the objection, you get the property owner to sign on that authorization to sell. Okay, now I give a bit of time for the slide to load. 
So you see, this is the complete listing model. Okay, this is the complete listing model. Now, most of the time when I ask Ren, how many of your listing complete this whole process? All right, how many of their listing complete the process? The response that I get uh, is oftentimes 10 to 20% max. All right, because they can tell me a lot of times, they can tell me they got 30, 40 listings. And when I ask them whether is their listing go through the whole process, a lot of times it just come down to a few. Okay, now, my question is this. Remember the complaints and the objections that you all listed out earlier, you know, that I give your comment into the comment section just now. Now, if you follow the listing model, will it prevent the problem, issues, objections, and difficulties that you face when dealing with the owner that you mentioned earlier? All right. Now, can you all let can you all let me know in the comment section? Let's say if you were to follow the this listing model. All right. Now, if you were to follow this listing model from the step one until the end, would you all still see the potential problem that you all mentioned just now? Can you all let me know in the comment section? Now again, you can answer it, all right, from, from really sin sincerely to me, because to me, it, it doesn't really matter whether it's a yes or a no, all right? Okay. Now I give you all 30 seconds to response, no. Uh, sorry, to response, okay? Response whatever you like, okay? So if you all were to follow the listing model, would you all still see the problems, issues, objections, and difficulties that you all face before this. All right. Uh, I, I see a lot of no's. Uh, Sharon replied, depends on the owner, right? Depends on, uh, depends on the owner on a slight percentage. But if you really do the whole process, okay, if you really do the whole process, and if the owner is still very stubborn, then you got two options. One option is to take that listing, or option number two is not to take that listing. All right. So if you have gone through the whole process, now if you still face whatever difficulties that you all mentioned just now, you got two options. One is to take that listing, or number two is don't take that listing. Now, previously, when I, when I tell negotiators not to take that listing, then I, then I get the question. But that one is my farming area. So if I don't take that listing, then I would lose a listing. Now, don't confuse when I say don't take the listing with, you never follow up with the owner. It's two different things. Huh? I never say you, I only say don't take the listings. Huh? I never say you don't every other week follow up with the property owner. All right. You can always follow up with the property owner and, and ask, hey, did other property agent bring you any buyer? Is there any viewing? You know, how is the home selling uh, going on? All right. So let the owner speak. And, and when the owner, you can sense that it is more flexible, then there is a time when you can go and take the listing. Okay. And also, now let's say, let's say, if, if let's say you are farming that area, and suddenly you got a buyer, you think that what the buyer is looking for perfectly meet that particular unit, which you have spoken to the property owner, but you never take the listing. Now you got the buyer right now. Do you think if you pick that phone and call the owner and tell the owner, I got a buyer for the unit right now, do you think the owner will still see you? All right. So you can see now, if you follow this model, you will follow this whole model step by step the output that you will get is more predictable. All right, it, is, it will be a lot more predictable. Wing, can I quickly add something here? Yeah. Well, I think um, a lot of us who have been very experienced in real estate for a long time, um, and we always had, have, it, have this problem with the models that you, in terms of, we always, the, the individual owners is always our challenge. 
some of us, it may not be us not going through the whole model, but the owners um, not responding to us because generally one of the main problems, I think, is that a lot of agents in the market don't do this. Uh, do you agree with me? A lot of agents in the market today don't go through this whole process, don't journey with them. And when an agent do that and create values, there are some owners who are, who are already in the business, already selling properties for a few times, especially the more affluent owners, they will have a challenge. So I actually went through the same challenge. Bing, do you mind going back to the slide before this? I think there's some requests for that. Um, I, I was stuck at this level of the negotiating commission many times. Um, in my career of selling high-end market products, put properties, I remember there's one particular owner that um, is not very convinced that whatever I've written here in the service and marketing plan, which I always do, a proposal to them, they felt that it was just on a piece of paper and I'm not willing and I may not commit to that. So I actually put it into a contract with them in my appointment of exclusivity. I put that whole promise of doing all those things and giving them a periodical update on a weekly basis. I will meet them weekly for 45 minutes for the first three months during this exclusive market, uh, exclusive appointment. I, will com I think I was like 10 or nine things that I've committed to do and I put it down there and I put it into that authorization to sell as an annex. Um, and that's how you go in there and say that I'm the agent that is willing to commit to this. I'm willing to commit to this and I write it down on a piece of paper and I show up every time and I give them an option. If any time I fail to commit all these things every week when I update you, you have the right to fire me. This is when I think the difference between a good agent and a normal agent. They are willing to put money where their mouth is and they are willing to commit to make something happen and not wait for something to happen. And I update them, look, this is how many number of buyers have called me, how many numbers of buyers have came to see the property. These are their feedback and comment. Number one comment is price too high. So these are some of the things that I think most agents following this model can tweak some of the things that the way we engage the customers by putting certain measures in place to support your efforts to the customer. It shouldn't be a way that I'm just doing this process and eventually I, I, I will get it. You need to follow through and you need to have another process where you are thinking about how to commit and demonstrate that commitment to the client. So basically, as we can say, you have done all these things, you also must demonstrate that we are willing to follow through and commit to that opportunity. I think commitment is both ways. If you want the owner to commit to you, you must first commit to the owner. Right? So I, I think these are some of the things I just want to quickly highlight because I think there are a lot of experienced agents in the, in, the, uh, in, the, in the audience. I just want to share that moment. Sorry, I mean, go back. Yeah, no problem, no problem. Um, so so uh, now why, why I did this is because a lot of times when I, when you know the, the problems, the objections, the, the issues that you all face uh, when meeting the owner, I, I hear that all the time. I hear that all the time. And a lot of times, you know, rents will tell me it is because of the owner. It is because of the environment. Now, why owner don't give me that percentage of commission? The, 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 because at the end of the day, uh, when I talk to them, I will tell them that the problem that you face is not because of those factors. It's really because you never complete this flow systematically. All right. Now, you can see this flow is, is, is you need to follow the steps, all right? So, which is why a lot of times, you know, people uh, ask me, your owner only give me 2% commission. Then I will ask the question, how do you ask the owner uh, for the commission? Then uh, they would say, you know, um, owner send me the photo. I tell the owner 3% uh, commission, but owner say no, 2%. Now, of course, if owner just send you a photo and then you ask for 3%, of course, you don't get 3%. Uh. So you need to justify your value. You need to justify to the owner, these are the things that I will be doing. And in return, this is my professional fees. All right? So do you, do you, do you think that if you follow this process through, the chances of securing this, it will be a lot higher. And, and this process, I have seen 
uh, all the, the top producers doing it uh, year in, year out, and they are able to do this very successfully. All right. So you can see, uh, yeah, so actually, yeah, Vivian has already mentioned just now. Now, to be very frank with you, now what I have just mentioned just now about the listing model, it is actually Ignite Power Session number four. The topic is win the seller. So it is a three hour session, all right? And Ignite alone, there are 12 sessions all together. And if I'm not wrong, there is a new cycle for Ignite session beginning very soon. Okay, so for those in Ripfield, you can inquire from your respective market center and participate into this Ignite session. All right. Now, a lot of you all might think that uh, it is very basic. Um, you have already known. Now, for those new people, for those new rents, you can take this opportunity, learn this model, and start following strictly with the model all right follow strictly with the model remember when i show the model just now you start with the foundational model before you before you become creative and for the experienced people yeah i know a lot of things could be you know uh, very uh, uh, surface very foundation but but through this session all you need is just to pick up one or two important things that you can re-adapt into your whatever way you are doing right now and that could that could uh, break through your result to uh, through the next level okay yeah uh, ignite is just solely for a uh, review agent okay uh, it's actually a 12 uh, it's a 12 uh, sessions all right so which is why you can see initially uh, when John Lee helped me start the session asking what is your expectation now when I look at the expectation you know in my mind because I only got two hours all right um, and and if I can do that in two hours uh, then I don't know what to say uh, then I, I will run a, a education business already so you can see um, it, it, it the whole process okay you can see this whole cycle this whole cycle um, there are total seven steps, all right? So KW has got a very comprehensive, foolproof, and also time-tested model to complete the cycle, okay? Uh, like I mentioned just now, uh, luckily, luckily, I'm not a KWU trainer, uh, okay? Because when I go through that materials already make me want to peng san already, okay? So thank God I'm not a KWU trainer, so you know, for me to for me to put up the content for this uh, session, I just pull out like this little bit of it, and for me to create today's session. So there is so many more uh, models that is in place. All right. So for for those uh, people inside refill, right? I I really appeal to all of you all to really you know uh, whether you are new or whether you are experienced, you really really need to pay attention to these models. Because I've got the luxury to quickly uh, go through all the materials and I can tell you uh, no matter at what stage you are in right now, there are things for you to learn from me. There are things for you to learn from me. Okay? So you can see uh, in today, I just covered the listing uh, part or a lot of people call it the inspection where you will meet the owner to get the property listing for sale all right so there's a lot more steps there is a lot more models uh, that needs to be uh, that is in place okay uh, now my dilemma when i got the topic okay i'm like this person okay when I was given that five words, you know, scripts to win your client, which I changed to model to win your client, I, I was in this position, okay? Because I only got two hours of presentation. Now, if I put in too little content, then I waste everybody's time, okay? Now, if I put too much content, then my worry is that everybody get confused and worse still, uh, you all implement it wrongly, okay? So, which is why, now, let me, let me tell a, a story, okay, a butter cake story. 
Now, during this MCO, I'm not sure how many actually started baking. Okay. Now, for those who is not aware, if you are not aware, the stores that are selling the baking materials were booming. Okay. These uh, baking materials shops were booming. You know, buyers were queuing outside the shop and each person is only given 10 minutes outside the shop. All right, and there's even one shop you are not even allowed to go inside. They already uh, they put a table at the door. You just tell them what you need. They will take it out for you. Okay, this is how good their business is during the MCO period because everybody wants to bake. Okay. Now, now I'm not sure you all realize. Now baking has also been modeled. Okay, baking has also been modeled. Remember where I showed just now? Model is basically an input, a process, and an output. Now, if you look at the big, the, the butter cake uh, process, now this is the input. The input is basically the ingredient. Now, if you want to bake a butter cake, it's very simple. You need butter, you need eggs, you need flour, and you need sugar. Okay, basically, this is the input. Okay, this is the input. Now, this is the process. Now, I'm not going to go through it, but you can see that every steps are properly documented in the model. You can see that to bake a, a butter cake, that is 12 step process. Okay, there's a 12 step process that you everybody need to follow. Now, however, the thing is this, anyone want to guess what is the output? Now, what is the output? Anybody want to guess what is the output? Can let me know in the comment section. Now, if you follow through the process, what is the potential output that you are going to get? Okay, yeah. Of course, the output is a kick, ah, okay? Now, but the problem is this. Correct. Now, you see a lot. Now, I'm very happy. Like, okay, everybody is very truthful uh, to yourself. Okay, now, to be very frank with you, the first, free, the first few tries, this is the result. Whether it is burned, whether it's not cooked, or whether it is failed. Okay, don't expect everything to be the good the very first try you do it. Okay, even if it is a model, even if it's a process, you, you, you follow exactly the, you put exactly the input, you follow through the whole process. To be very frank with you, the first result that you get potentially could be like this. Okay? However, with a few rounds of practice and coaching sessions, it's just a matter of time, your result would be like this. A very successful, fluffy butter cake. Okay, and you will be able to do it repeatedly again and again after that because you have already know the process. All right. Uh, yeah, I'm actually I'm actually coming to an end really. Okay, now I'm ending my presentation with now to be successful in real estate, it is not about reinventing the model. Okay. It is about following proven and time-tested model and execute it flawlessly, all right? Now, I really hope everybody understand this. This is my parting words and I, I don't think I'll be doing any more virtual trainings in the short term, all right? To be successful in real estate, it is not about reinventing the model. It is about following the proven and time-tested model and execute it flawlessly. Now, this is what you and me got to do every day, which is why moving forward, me and the team will be executing flawlessly after this. All right. Now, moving forward, if you want to reach us, you can call us at these phone numbers. All right. And these are my social media pages. You can follow them because from time to time, I will release video contents. And uh, finally, now I won't be offering personal consultation, uh, not like last round, because the last round, I spent more than 12 hours consulting one-on-one, -on -one, not including the time that I got to arrange and I got to set up. 
So this time I'm not going to do that anymore. Okay. So what we will do instead is that I have created this uh, group, uh, this group inside Facebook. The link is here. You can also uh, scan the QR code for the link. So if you've got any further questions or any questions on real estate, can let me know there and then I will take it from there. Because from the consultation uh, uh, sessions, I noticed the questions are all roughly the same. So, so when I do it through the group, then I can answer one question and then I can address uh, a lot of people's uh, uh, concerns and difficulties as well. So this is my plan after this. So, uh, so that group is created not for me to post content, it's for you all to ask any questions that you all have and then I will address it from there. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, Tuan Tuan and Tuan Tuan, this is all I have for today's presentation. Uh, thank you very much for everybody's time. That's yeah. all I have today. Do you guys have any questions? Thank you, Wing, for a very good... How many of you thought that it was a very good session today. You can leave that, that, that screen on there for a while, Wing, and then you just talk here. Okay, how many of you thought it was a very good session? There you go. It's actually very simple and straightforward, right? Um, I think at the start of the conversation, there were a lot of people um, asking questions. How about if this is the client giving this problem? That's the client. Yeah, I like the way that Wing started it. But the problem, I think we always need to inspect what we want to expect is to inspect our processes. I think very few... Um, it's not many trainers or not many training programs or not many leadership would tell agents that don't focus on the output. A lot of us focus on the output all the time. But we don't think about the input and also think about the process. Right? It is incomplete without focusing on the input and the process. So what you put into the process will then derive the output. Um, so any questions that we can have uh, from the audience today, I just wanted to make it clear that a lot of times, if we focus on our process and our input, right, the output is the natural, right? right? The output is the natural. So we start wrong. We start by looking at the output. Um, and we start saying that, hey, um, just I like the example of the cake. We go around and look for the best recipe, right? And the best recipe. And we say that, hey, it didn't work because the cake came out flat. But the problem is not because the recipe is wrong, because we are not used to the whole understanding of how does that work. And in order for us to understand, you need to do first. Someone I think mentioned earlier, um, there's the model needs to adjust to the audience. I think it's not about the model. I think it's us need to adjust to the model that will work for that audience. All right? Is there any questions uh, from you guys um, to Wing right now? Because he has very, uh, he's a very busy guy because he's always focusing on his model and he's driving and doing MCO, they are having sales. And I think right now they are already in pipeline with people having sales already. Um, any questions that you all have uh, for Wing? Maybe while we're waiting for people to check in the chat box of Wing, Wing, I have a quick question for you. What is your advice for people who struggle to work on their processes? What is your advice? Because a lot of times we get caught up in focusing on closing deals, in, in addicted to closing deals, but we don't focus on the processes that will lead us to closing deals, right? What are your advice to those people who are struggling to kind of learn how to focus on processes? Uh, now, it, it really depends. Now, for, now, this problem is not so critical if you are hitting the goals that you want to achieve. Now, this is more critical for those who is not achieving your, the, the goal that you want to achieve. All right? Remember, we talk about GPS, 135, all these 411s that, that talks about you know, what you want to achieve and what you need to do. Now, if you continue to stick with what you are doing right now, all right, the, the result that you're going to obtain, it will be there. All right? Now, there is a saying that says that now if you do it, the thing the same over and over again and expecting a different result is insanity. All right. Yep. So which is why uh, Jonathan Lee mentioned very well just now is a lot of people focus on the output, all right? but they never look at actually the process that they are going through. Now, if you're not able to go to where you are or where you wanted to go, then don't look at the output. Whereas you need to look at the process, how to, how to change a different model. All right. Like I say, there's two ways. One is you, you, you tweak your own model, or number two, you adapt a proven and a time-tested model. So if you ask me, I think adapting a new 
uh, proven and time-tested model, it would be the better way to move forward. Um, and I think a lot of people um, always struggle to find a model that works for everything. Kind of like every client, it's proof one. Straight away, every client comes to me, this model must be able to convince every single client that I cannot give uh, room for some clients are just not meant to work with us. Or some clients just cannot work. Whatever model you use, they are just not the right perspective or the, not the right opportunity for us, right? So how, what do you say about that? What do you think to that truth of that um, concept or that mindset? Now, to be very frank with you, there's no one model in this world that can, you know, that can cater to 100% of, of the people, all right? But you got to remember, you are not in there to look for a model which is 100%. Because all you need to serve is just that niche market that would help you achieve your goal. So, which is why whatever model that we have existingly is more than sufficient for you to cater to whatever niche or market that you need. There's always yeah. that, you know, top few percent, you know, as an engineering, we, we don't look at 100%. All the top, you know, the, we reach until 90, 95 is good enough because we know to achieve, to go from 95 to 100 is impossible. Mm. Or it will take too much time and it's just not worth it because it's not bringing us closer to the goal. So All saying right. no to those opportunities and just move, and that's the truth. There are certain people that we just can't work with, you can't get them to sign on the blog. They just won't give us exclusive whatever you do, right? So the focus is then move on. So I like to say this to the audience, it's not about winning all the time, it's about winning most of the time. If you've got 10, 10 opportunities, you win 7, that's a good win. Now, if you're winning 4 out of 10, that means you've got a lot of work to work on in your models and your systems. Right? If you're winning 7, winning 8, that's fantastic. You're, you're on the way. So 2, you just cannot. Uh, 2, you just can't work it because that's just not, 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 not possible. Just find that 8, find that 7, right? So I think skills will always improve if we practice. Now, Wing, there's a lot of people right now I see they shift model to model because when they try three rounds, they say it won't work. Then they go and try another thing and go three rounds and it won't work or so. What do you have to say about that? They keep on changing models. Yeah. No, remember when I mentioned just now, you see, now everybody in this, in this planet, like what Jordan Lee like to put it, you and me, everybody can create model. The problem is not about creating model. All right. The, 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 the thing here is about you know, having a proven and a time-tested model. Now, if these models are already proven and time-tested, which means that everybody has been using it, so you don't have to go and knock the wall because those walls have been knocked by all the people before this. So these models are already uh, very matured. So we all just need to follow through that model. And I think the process of self one thing to go to self-mastery is focusing on one thing to change a lot of things. Master, I like that William, go master that model. Self-mastery is the process. It's like, I need to learn and we have to expect, um, inspect what we expect, figure out at the end of that particular failure is what the lessons are we learning. If I went into that listing presentation according to what Ling has, Ling has just taught us the listing model, which part didn't work? Was it my marketing presentation didn't work? Was it the methodology that I shared about marketing was not impressive? Is it because I didn't do things that other people are not doing? Right? So it's a lot of inspection needs to happen. And I find myself wondering how many people inspect their processes on a daily basis. Now, I was just on a call uh, with my team just now. Uh, not call, I mean, I just WhatsApp my team just now because there were about 300 people registered for this session. Today, we have about 210, 205 people. So I just asked them to inspect what is the process that we are sending out the links to people so to make sure that we are getting everyone inside. So I'm inspecting what I'm expecting. If you don't inspect on a regular basis, you wouldn't know where the gaps are. And there are always going to be gaps. I believe you are improving your model day to day, right? You're changing certain things, not, tweak, not changing. When you see that you're hitting a ceiling, do you tweak and you enhance certain things? Or when there's something new coming up, do you enhance it? Within the same framework, but do you do enhancement to some of the things? Now, again, now for, for those like myself or for the experienced Ren, yeah, we do enhance our model time to time, but it's just very minor enhancement. We don't, we don't change it drastically. 
So yeah. for, for the newer rents, right, don't try to do that for now. All right, just follow exactly already. Yeah. Um, and there is very specific reason when we enhance those models because we know what we are doing. So, yeah. so once you have built the foundation, then you become creative. You know that, that MREA model. Right. So for example, in your marketing right now, you can present, if you are going exclusive right now, I will definitely do a 3D walkthrough with you through Matterport. That's an enhancement to your marketing proposal. But you still have to propose what you're going to do for marketing. It's just that you add one more step. I'm not going to do a 3D walkthrough for your listings if you appoint me exclusively. Right? That's the kind of enhancement we are talking about. We are not changing and hey, don't do marketing. I'm going to not do marketing and I'm going to make a sale for you. It doesn't work. There's a process to go through, right? If you don't market, making a phone call, asking a buyer to take a look at the property is a form of marketing. It's called direct marketing, right? Or prospecting, right? So, so you need to understand enhancement is still within that framework. If you don't do this, or you could do appointments or you could do inspection virtually because of MCO, for example. Those are certain enhancements you do in this season, right? But you, you, you want to go physically and look at the property because that's what most people would do, right? So these are some of the things that I just want to make it clear to our audience, especially I do see from the audience a lot of experienced agents. Um, and a lot, probably you guys will have a lot of challenges you have been through. It's good to reflect on how we run this process of our business right now. It is good time to inspect our business. How many, ask yourself this question, I like being asking this question, how many of you inspected the properties that are on your so-called listing? Ask yourself this question, how many percent of the listings that you are marketing and selling right now you actually visited, inspected, met the owner face to face and ask those questions. Very critical to ask that question for yourself because that's what we need to do professionally to sell. Yeah, there you go. Something to ask yourself. What is the percentage of people that you met and you have physically inspected the property before you sell that listing, before you market that listing, right? So I think a lot of times you need to reflect on ourselves first before we put on the cap and say the owner is a problem. If you are an owner right now on the flip side, would you want the best agent to support you or would you want any agent to support you? I would think everyone wants the best. Generally speaking, generally speaking, right? So this is what you need to do. Okay, so before we part ways, thank you, Wing, for, for a very good share. So before we part ways, I want to leave uh, with a couple of announcements, okay? Uh, and then Wing will probably uh, give us some, uh, what do you call that, uh, last, last says or last words that he has, laugh at last at wise. Uh, this afternoon, we're going to have a Chinese session in how to build a business plan. This is a model of thinking of how you put your business plan in perspective and it's called a GPS and it's done in Chinese. So uh, MJ is a high production agent. Notice that all the people that we invite on this training are people who are in production generally or have experienced good production in their business. So that's gonna happen this afternoon at 2 p.m. Please sign up if you have not signed up. Someone will send you the link. Next, next, next slide please. This is a, I want to ask everyone, if you have not signed up for this session, please sign up. This is probably one of the best sessions to help you understand how to communicate and how to conduct a need analysis with your client. Many agents today do not do a need analysis. They don't figure out how to bring understanding and clarity to what the client needs to do. It's not about convincing. It is not about um, uh, forcing or getting them to agree on the price. It's about going through an analysis with them and motivating them to make a decision that is benefiting for them and influencing them in the decision. So this is an excellent session um, by Matt Dieter. And Matt Dieter, to me, in my opinion, is probably one of the best needs analysis teacher or coach for real estate in the world I have ever seen so far. Physically met him, know him, believe that he's one of the best. He works very closely with Gary Keller to, to write new models and playbooks 
about leadership right now and he's excellent about needs analysis. So I want all of you to attend this session tomorrow. I know it's at 9, 9.30 to 11 p.m. due to the U.S. time difference, but I encourage all of you to join this session. I promise you it's going to be a one hell of a good session. And if you are not signed up, please sign up on this um, QR code or that link down there. Next question, please. Next slide, please. Um, we are still doing our fundraising for our rate day support, um, whereby on 14th of May, all over the world, KW officers or KW regions will be doing something for the community. And this year, we are choosing to support our rent. So for if you are a guest here, you have not joined us, please participate in a donation that we will fund out to support all the rents that are in need right now in Malaysia. Next slide, please. If you are a rent or you know of any rents who are struggling financially, um, going through difficulty to put at least basic necessities in their front for their family in this season of challenging moments, please get them to reach out to us. Uh, we would want to support them. We have already support 20 over families right now. Um, uh, so we are able to do that because we have raised a significant amount of funds and the fundraising process is still going on um, and we want to support more people. So that's the announcement for today. Okay, thank you. Please do share the screen. Um, Wing, what are your last advice to everyone in this room right now? What are some of the last takeaways that you want them to go back and think through and work through their, their business? What are the last advice that you have? Well, no, a lot of times when I i seen the, those who 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 not able to achieve your goal or who is looking for the next breakthrough. Their, their focus, their primary focus is on the output. All right? But in, if you focus on the output, you will not be able to improve the output. So instead of focusing on the output, you need to shift your focus and look at the process instead. All right? If it is not working, then you've got to do something about it. Now, whether you're going to tweak it yourself or you're going to you're going to adapt a, a proven, a new proven time-tested model, then it's up to you, all right? So, but my last word is always look at the processes and not the output. Yeah. So with that, thank you very much, Ming, for joining us today. And thank you for taking time of your business to support us and support everyone in the audience in their journey of their business in these trying and challenging moments. For the rest of the, of the audience, um, thank you very much for joining us and taking the time off. We wish that... We want to try to keep the sessions short and sweet so that you can go back to your businesses and get out there and now focus on enhancing your processes and working through on the right um, building blocks for the business of your success. So with that, thank you very much to all review agents. I uh, will see you at 1 p.m. today for that major for our weekly announcements that we'll stay in communication. The, to the rest of you, we'll see you at the next training either this afternoon or tomorrow. Thank you very much and have the rest have a blessed day today. Thank you very much.